What are you doing? <laughs> Me? <laughs> Just hanging around. <laughs> what are you doing? Me? <laughs> Just hanging around. Everybody, welcome back to Fleek Feud. Okay, all right, good answer, good answer. What the fuck did you just say? Calm down. All right, today you're gonna name five bullshit predatory practices that will be in Payday 3. Have an online only, I see. Oh my God, can we see online only? Oh, I can't believe it. I said to do something and he did it. Would you like to play? I don't play games, fool. <laughs> We'll be right back after these messages. Payday 3 is a game all about reclaiming your tax dollars the American way. It's four dudes, one bank, blowing holes open and diving in, trying to keep from busting your ring backs. And in an industry that seems hell-bent on grave robbing, it's nice to finally play something all about bank robbing. The original side hustle before door dashing, before Ubering, and after the Jack Shack. America's pastime, next to wars and baseball. At least it used to be back in the good old days. Anyways, if you're the one fellow that hasn't heard of the Payday series because you're still trapped in a VC tunnel waiting out the Vietnam War, I say stay in there. This game needs at least five years to get back to that Billy Boy Clinton RP. But for the rest of us pro Payday enjoyers, let's sift through the shit, shall we? This is the Payday 3 beta, which I received exclusive top shelf champagne and limousine access to because I am one of the most active Payday 2 players that ever gamed. When I forgot this shit was happening and requested access five days into the beta, they granted me access the very next day because they know who I am. Do you know who I am? Because they do. I'm kind of a big deal. They call me the great white hope of Sweden. And remember that because I have access and you don't, I am better than you. Shit, it's gone. Payday 3 is a fantastically fun game because it's like Payday 2 except you can close doors. <gasps> And as someone with some of the highest game time in Payday 2, I can really say that we wanted to be able to close doors. Also, we can slide now, which is pretty huge. Something all of us Payday 2 experts were always saying to each other as we chatted in our high playtime discords was, you know what we need? That dive flop from Call of Duty. But I guess dipping my ass in a vat of lube and sliding across the floor like a slippery seal will do. And you know what else we were saying, brother? You don't get to know because you aren't on my level. Now welcome back to Fleek Feud. Can we get a Jeff from Get for Fub? With the prompt, predator practices in Payday 3. Go ahead, Jeff. An in-game cash shop that's gonna charge you 10 times what Payday 2's DLC did for a fraction of the content. I can't, uh, uh, I, I, can't, I can't believe it. Who would even think of that? Oh, please. We're on TV. There are children watching. <gasps> Survey says... Oh, how the, what the, uh, uh, we'll be right back after these messages. Now let's talk about guns. Guns in this game feel solid and they sound even better. Everything has enough of an impact while maintaining that overall lightly shitted feeling that Payday players have come to know and love. And as for the sound, it's eargasmic. You have the shrill sounds of the rapid fire AR, the booming sounds of buckshot, and the flamboyant sounds of the SIG. Which is fitting because if you use the SIG over the revolver, well then I just bet that you accepted every Every last romance option in Baldur's Gate, and you know what the hell I'm talking about. Bear fucker. My only change would be to make all of it deafeningly loud for peak immersion. And by immersion, I mean long-term hearing loss. As for gun variety, there really isn't much to see in the beta, especially in terms of any crazy sawed-off minigun or comically large spoon or akimbo explosive shotguns. You used to have the rotary grenade launcher that's tied to a crime meter. Which effectively works like this, right? If you achieve 100 life sentences, drops a loot crate on you to spread the good word more efficiently. And, and my brother and Christ, the word is bellowing louder than a white woman going well out a call window. Fuck you, sniper man! Huh? Oh. Welcome back to the Fleet Feud, everybody. Good answer. We are taking this over to Frozoid. Frozoid, name one more predatory practice that Payday 3 decided to include in their game. The Denuvo anti tamp ultimate anti piracy software that can't be cracked but has been cracked repeatedly in less than a week of a game's release. Fucking over the modders and the players. Also, cock and balls media can get their D narrow back. <laughs> but, come on, Pip. Can we see Denuvo anti tamp Oh! We'll be 
right back. All right, I got my shit twisted a little bit and did this out of order. So now let's talk about general gameplay feel. Something all of us expert payday players always discuss is how annoying this stupid goddamn drill is and how this piece of shit constantly breaks and how we wake up sometimes in the middle of the night hearing... <laughs> And we have to taste around to get the thoughts out of our head. <laughs> but we can't. You know, not really. <laughs> <clears throat> Luckily, now the drill is gone, and now I'm confident, much like a crazy ex-girlfriend, she'll be back to fuck up my sleep as soon as I start getting happy again. However, I have more confidence in the Overkill Live Service Innovation Initiative to sell me the strength to find another way. Overall, I'll describe this game as feeling like the heister's packed on maybe 20 pounds, so the earth comes at you really fucking quick. It's just enough to feel different, but at the same time, when I go back to Payday 2, it's not like I'm exactly clicking crackhead speed over there either. The police are more spongy, but now they don't scale sponginess with the difficulty, so all the changes is accuracy count and how sharp they sharpen their bullets to be. And for me personally, I'll say that I will gladly make that change with the caveat that I can kiss harder than this sick hits whatever spawns in by the end of these heists. And now to rattle through a bunch of other changes, you can now grab dudes from behind, taser men can now bust, policemen can now blow out their backs and levitate, and riot shielders can now turn and let you at the there. Rumpa stereo when you throw a grenade. Pause! I don't know what just came over me just then. I gotta I gotta stop drinking Bud Light. Also, cloakers now look more like sewer goblins, which I think is a nice change. And, and they also come with a new noise that some people hate, but I think they did a bang up job. Take a listen. Come over here and kiss me on my hot mouth. And we are back with the feud. Rufus, name one predator practice. And payday three. Simon, if the cunt ain't there anymore to make bangers like Razor Mine, that isn't a predatory practice. That's just a word. Dragon. Don't you have to run it by the board? The fuck I do, Rufus. I know that shit's wrong. Try again. Neither of the founders nor the game directors that made this company and made Payday 2 are still at overkill and in fact factoring in layoffs and natural churn of employees, we really have no reason to place our blind faith into overkill because they are not the same overkill that learned our loyalty. <laughs> That's just not what I fucking asked, is it? Bad answer! Bad answer! Cut the commercial break! Fleet Feud is brought to you in part by Flabachi Knives. They never go dull because they come in the box, dull. Flabachi Knives. Now to continue a thread from earlier, let's talk about the loud versus quiet dilemma and what replaced the drill, at, at least for this level. First off, loud. Because loud is the man's way to go. It's the natural choice for anyone with a nut in their sack. You think it's hard doing stealth with your jank privilege? Have you even tried loud? Do you even know what it's like? Do you even know the plight of the loud man? To take on the entire police department at one time? Well, if you're this chick, you know. But you don't know, motherfucker, look at me! Squeeze the trigger and see just how good it feels. Enemies stack up, snipers rain down, cloakers are beating down teammates, more enemies rappel down from the skies, dozers are slowly waddling at you with their obese Michael Myers looking ass. Uh, they really captured the chaos that makes you go, oh shit, how are we gonna make it out of this one, buddy? To which I respond, nah, 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 nah. how are you gonna make it out of this one? I am the fastest mobility scooter on this side of the Mississippi. Editors note on the official Fleek AI intelligence scale, I'm gonna rate these AI at about a head <laughs> trauma level because they're, they're still pretty fucking retarded. Now as for how you get to the money, instead of using the bunk ass drill, you have to use thermite to burn a hole through the ceiling of the vault, then drop in, pick the door, disable the die packs on the money, and then haul it out. If you're playing solo, the blue man group are splooging on three pallets, nothing you can do about it. Simple as. Now as for the stealth, you can ask me if I've ever completed a stealth mission, but never ask me how I complete my stealth missions. But because they really didn't give me much to work with in this beta, I will now tell you how I complete my stealth missions. The first rule of stealth missions is no witnesses. Study show the number one cause of alarms being triggered is someone being alive enough to trigger them so exercise indiscriminate problem solving you will incur a small fee for this because typically the police prefer to handle jobs like this but hey you want to stealth or not pimp i'm just trying to help you out on the bright side now if someone joins your lobby and ruins your stealth run you can ruin their life by pinning 10 homicides and 300,000 in cleanup fees on them and then they won't even discover that until they finish the mission 20 minutes from now passive aggression it's fun the second rule of stealth missions is never underestimate just how little of a shit people give about your microaggressions towards the collateral damage. Drop two civvies broad daylight in the parking lot? They're killing civvies! 
Loud death rattle coming from the room over? Peggy doesn't give a fuck. Drop two men in the lobby, then shatter the glass, dropping the two outside? I got time to comb my hair and shit. Drop an officer directly next to this pantsuit power user? Ain't nothing's gonna break a her stride on the way to get that last bear claw. The third rule, have fun out there, champ. Now, welcome back to the feud, Rufus. Read the answer we wrote for you. Actually, I was just thinking, no, you weren't, Rufus. <laughs> wrong is, wrong is, get this motherfucker. All the team please you have a chance to steal. I'll ask again, name another predatory practice in payday three. They made it so that now you have to level up each individual weapon to get the attachments, which makes the if game this more goes grindy. Let's buy the truth that weapon to kits to from the store for the microtransaction currency. Please, Jesus, I'm ready. That's it? Yeah. Thank God. Making the game more grindy than selling shortcuts. As much as I hate you, Team Other Fleek wins it all. Good answer. By the way, the final answer was that you have to create an account for some random website you've never heard of in order to play this game, which hopefully isn't selling even more of my data to the Chinese. Informing them even deeper on what I tug the Tonka truck to. Time will tell. Thanks for watching, Fleek Feud. Thanks to the flock of pimps for buying me the fuel. And another huge thanks to the pimperers for funding the getaway car. And another, another huge thanks to our newest pimperer, Dylan Lawrence. God bless the land of Timmy's. Well, goodbye, pimps.